morning, my name is Stephen Douglas and I'm just going to make a video this morning on intention, on what I'm trying to do with my videos. So it's Thursday morning around 11 o'clock and I had the honor and pr privilege of meeting with a dear friend this morning who's actually um, going to be a co-author on the book I'm writing um, called It's Not Happening to Me, It's Just Happening. So yeah, we uh, we went over a few things and she gave me some really good insight. You know, I've been trying really hard lately to put my message out there and, you know, I've been trying to put it out there a little, a little too much. You know, I, I've been getting on a lot of different aspects of social media and I really need to, to reel it back in and just focus on two or three different aspects of social media instead of, you know, Tumblr and, and Pinterest and Vimeo and YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. So I'm just going to try to limit it to three. Um, you know, and it's it's tough because I, I really want to put myself out there. I, I, I really, like, want to help people. And I think that what I'm doing does help people. You know, I've, I've gotten some really positive feedback on what I'm doing and the, and the, you know, the real raw emotion that I express and, like, my truth, you know. My truth is that I'm in recovery. I'm also a Buddhist. I was a drug addict for many, many years. And, you know, today I'm not addicted to drugs. I'm, I'm clean and sober and practice Buddhism under um, the care and love of Ajahn Bullying. And, you know, he really helps me with the process and, and being a student of the path, the Noble Eightfold Path that, uh, that really helps me in my daily life and, and see things and look at things with pure intention and be able to recognize when my intentions are pure, aren't pure. So, you know, so she really gave me some really good insight this morning on, on putting myself out there, but reeling it back in and, and starting smaller. You know, a lot of people ask me to do things like this and write a book. And so, you know, I didn't want to do it, man. I, I didn't want to do it at all. And, and you know, like some people are, are hurt about what I'm talking about. Some people are resentful about what I'm talking about. And some people think we should just sweep everything under the rug and look the other way. And I think it's really, really important that we as people in recovery put ourselves out there. We allow ourselves to be intimate with others and we allow ourselves to be vulnerable and shed light on the harsh reality of addiction that we suffer greatly and our stories are so unique and not unique. You know, we each go through the same similar traumas. I, I think as, as an addict, you know, a lot of why I used was self-worth, self-doubt, like really just feelings of worthlessness. I, I couldn't get over them, you know, for many years. I'm 41 years old now and I, I finally feel worth it, you know, for the first time in my life. And I think that's why I didn't stay clean, you know, like I, I first got clean in, uh, in the year of 2000 and now it's 2017 and, and I've been in and out of recovery for many years and I never really understood why I kept going back out until... I really investigated my patterns and why I relapsed and why I continue to relapse because I just doubted myself. I didn't, I didn't love myself enough to, to give myself that chance to stay clean. And especially when life got like really, really good, I always uh, sabotaged my own recovery. So I'm not doing that today. You know, I'm really looking into why I used and how to stay clean and how to recover and how to heal. And I think it's really important to tell the story of how I do that. So that's just what I've been trying to do. Like I need to establish intention and tell people why I'm speaking out. And I just think it's like super important right now, especially right now in 2017 with everyone overdosing and 
you know, just like the early age that kids are starting now, you know, I volunteer with some kids at this rehab and, you know, these kids started shooting up, man, when they were 12, 13, 14 years old, some a little bit older, you know, they're cutting themselves at a young age and it all stems from not feeling worth it. Let me see what I can do in order to make me feel good. And drugs make us feel good. They give us this false sense of happiness. So it's really important to, to finally look at what drugs are really doing to us. They are damaging our body. They're destroying our families and they're killing us. So we have to really look at how can I live clean? How can I do that? And, you know, in my life, how I do that is I learned how to uncover all the masks that prohibiting, prohibited me from seeing self-love. So in, in uncovering the love that was already there, I'm able to love myself today. I'm able to know that I'm completely and totally worth this life. I'm worth raising my children. I'm worth staying clean. I'm worth saying no when people put themselves in my life and, and want to sleep with me. I'm able to say no, like your intention isn't pure or my intention isn't pure. So yeah, like I said, it's just like super important to establish some self-love, to know our worth, to set really healthy boundaries, really look at intention behind what we're doing. And yeah, so I don't know, like, that's what I'm doing, man. Like, um, I'm trying to just still like, uh, establish intention to learn through this process and what a process it is, you know, like, it's such a journey and I'm making tons of mistakes, especially with, with social media and being a new author, uh, somebody who's never written before, who just writes on social media and I'm actually, you know, putting pen to paper or fingers to keyboard, I guess is really what it is. You know, uh, the old school way is, uh, you know, writing it down on paper and transferring it to like a typewriter or writing on a typewriter. So now I'm, um, writing on my cousin's tablet uh, who passed away and um, what an honor that is to be able to write my book on something of his you know it's uh it's an honor man and like I've said before like he is my guide and he's around me always he's inside me and I know that like I made a video the other day and my camera kept shutting off and you know, and then I kept losing the video and I kept having to redo it. And the realization was I'm not supposed to put those things out there yet. I'm not supposed to talk about why I relapsed yet because there's other people involved and that can cause harm in their lives. And, you know, I even I ended up finding that video and was able to trim it down to uh, talk about suic my suicide. And then I backed the video up and... uh deleted it off my phone and when I went to find it it wasn't there so I know that's not supposed to be out there yet I know I need to just talk about my journey and the journey writing the book and my journey into recovery again and being a Buddhist and how I'm trying to incorporate Buddhism with also the 12 steps of NA and refuge recovery and uh, like those are the two fellowships that I do as long as and as well as going to a Buddhist temple and working with um, a Buddhist monk who's been a monk for 44 years and really being open to that way of life and talking about ordaining as a monk um, in eight or nine years once my child support uh, responsibilities are, are taken care of and I've established a good business so that my children can be supported for the rest of their lives so that I can actually become a monk. And uh, it's funny though, I have a little funny story about last night. I was sitting with a couple monks meditating and then after um, this, uh, this Zen monk, uh, I was talking to him because in, in his tradition, he can actually marry and wear, wear a robe and, and work and be a monk. So that was really um, desirable to me because 
I don't know if I can go the rest of my life without a sexual intimate relationship. And, and I don't need to know yet. I mean, I am celibate right now and I'm not sleeping with anyone and I'm not in a relationship. And, you know, that comes from just wanting to heal and focus on what I need to be focusing on, like the volunteer work I do and writing my book and, and going to my, my little job that I have um, and, you know, seeing my kids as much as I can and seeing my friends and, and really looking inwardly and meditating as much as I can and really uh, getting into some insight, Vipassana meditation So like I said, it's just important to talk about the journey of writing the book and why I'm writing the book and the mistakes I'm making. So, um, oh, but quick, I was talking about, uh, you know, the, the Zen monk and how he can, how he can marry and he is married and he works and everything and how that was desirable to me. So, you know, in talking to him after, he said, you know, Stephen, you don't need to wear the robes to be a monk. Like, all you need to do is just be a monk inside. So that was a really profound moment for me to know that um, I don't need to wear the, the, the robes right now. Like, the robes are just an article of clothing. They really don't mean anything. I mean, they show outwardly what we're doing, but as long as I'm a monk inside and continue to practice in the way that I do and remain teachable then I can be a monk right now in this moment. And that was really, like I said, it was really profound to me to to know that and understand that. And I, I do have a quick story about uh, a monk that I used to practice with, and now he's back in Nepal. Um, his name is uh, Bhante Sumanakiti, and he's a very wise monk. He's a very young monk. And one day I was sitting in the temple room and you know, just meditating on my own before the monks came in. And he came in and he bowed down to me three times. And in that moment, I looked at him and I started to laugh. And I was like, I was like, Bonte, what are you doing? Why are you bowing to me? You're not supposed to bow to me. And he goes, Stephen, but you're the next Buddha. And I, and I chuckled and I was like, dude, I'm not the next Buddha. You're crazy. And he wasn't saying that I'm going to be a fully enlightened being and I'm going to be the next Buddha. He just saw the Buddha nature inside of me. He saw the Buddha inside of me. He saw the enlightenment inside of me. He saw the person I am in the moment and the person that I'm going to be. And that was a really special moment for me to to have this super wise man recognize the good in me. And, you know, it really meant a lot to me. Um, for someone else to see the good and compassion and, and the kindness inside of this heart. So I've, I've carried that little story and I've told that little story in meetings and um, at temple and stuff like that. And uh, that's awesome, man. It's awesome that other people recognize the good in me. And because uh, sometimes I don't see what other people see. And, you know, that stems from the self-worth issues and, you know, things I'm working on. But back to why I'm writing the book. So, you know, I decided to to open up and be really vulnerable with everyone and be super intimate with everyone and really share the raw stuff about about addiction and about suicide and, and mental health and how to heal from that and my process behind that. So I'm writing about uh, a lot of stories about um, using a lot of Buddhist stories, a lot of quotes, realizations, my journey through relapse and recovery and, and how I'm recovering through multiple fellowships, through uh, the Noble Eightfold Path and, and the Buddhist teachings. And, you know, I'm just trying to, to help other people. And, you know, in, in doing so, that also helps me. And um, it's a perfect balance there. Like, I can be selfless and help others, and in return, I get the help from helping them. And I don't need money to do it. I, I volunteer my time out of the kindness of my heart, and I really try to look at intention. And when my ego creeps up, I 
I get back to humility and see that I'm not that important. Like I'm just a an ex speedballing junkie that's trying to figure it out like everyone else. And if I can help one person in this life, it's all worth it. You know, I was talking to my mom this morning because she really wants me to, you know, tone down what I'm talking about. And I had to, you know, let her know I talk about the things I talk about in such a way that I do because that's my truth. And my truth is that I was a heroin addict. I shot heroin and cocaine for many, many years and suffered greatly. And I need to talk about those things because in talking about those traumas and those experiences, if I save one person, if one person can hear what I say and they get clean from that or they don't kill themselves that day, then I know that talking about what I do is completely worth it. All I need to do is help one person. I don't need to help 600. I don't need to help 7,000. Just one person. That's it, man. That That's it. And you know, like right now I'm working with a young girl and uh, she's struggling to stay clean and she's got about a week clean now. And you know, she's been going to meetings with me and she's gone to the temple with me and she's really engaging. And she struggles with self-worth and uh, I see myself in her. So I really want to help her. And I know that she may not stay clean and she may stumble and she may be unskillful just like I was for so, so many years. And just like I am still today, man, I mess up all the time, not with drugs or anything like that, but in you know other aspects, posting to social media where I shouldn't be posting and getting reprimanded for it and it's um it's funny, man. It's a process of learning about social media, what I can and can't do, and how to put myself out there in a more productive way and really reeling it back in and um, getting back to, you know, the purpose and what I'm doing and not really worrying about trying so hard on social media. Um, I just need to, to continue to be real and raw and honest and help people when I can without... Um, it being overwhelming for me, you know, because I am actually pretty busy and, uh, you know, but I'm also not that important. So uh, I try to help when I can and, and uh, you know, when I'm available to help others. And, you know, so that's that's what I'm doing. I, um, I'm just trying to help people um, with pure intention from a place of kindness and compassion and from experience. I have a lot of experience getting high and getting clean and suicide and Buddhism and life in general, man, like general suffering. And I really feel that I can help people. And like I said, if I can help one person or, you know, do community outreach like I'm doing for these Haddam public schools and let my kids see that, yeah, like, uh, their dad used to be addicted to drugs and now he's not. And, uh, if they can follow, follow in my footsteps of, of recovery in life and, and not get addicted to drugs, like that would be awesome. And if one of them does or two of them do, I can help them get clean and hopefully they survive that. But I can't shelter them from that. Like, this is the reality of the world we live in. We have to stop sweeping it under the rug. We have to shed light, shed light on the darkness because when we shed light on the darkness, the darkness dissolves naturally. And I know this right now, like I know in this moment when I shed light on my pain, my own personal struggles, it's not so painful anymore. And um, I cry because I am in pain. I cry because I have a lot of joy and what I'm doing really helps others and, and it helps myself, you know, like a lot of the stuff I talk about is really like fourth step, step stuff. And I've gotten some really negative feedback and people tell me like, I should be talking about this stuff to a therapist and not in out in the open. It's for not for the public eye. And that's the problem, man. No one wants to talk about this stuff. They just want to hide it. And it's so important to talk about this stuff. So these are all of the things that I'm going to talk about in the book. Like I said, the book is going to be called It's Not Happening to Me. It's just happening. I didn't come up with that. Uh, someone at the rehab I went to came up with that, and he's allowing me to use that, and I'm so blessed that he is. I think it's such a great mantra. And 
you know, I'm, I'm so happy I have the support of others in this life and found purpose, which are my children and self love and just be able to raise these kids the best that I can and provide for them when I'm gone. And, you know, that's all I want to do, man, I want to raise these kids, teach these kids, show them that like recovery is possible that you can go through the depths of hell, and you can change and be reborn in in this life and um, have a good, amazing life. And, you know, like talking about rebirth really, really quick. I know I'm talking about a lot of different things. Sometimes my mind is all over the place and I'm really working on that and I'm working on slowing down my speech. But I want to just touch on the concept of a soul that many of us cling to. You know, Ajahn and I were talking about a soul about a month ago and in Buddhism there's not really a, a, a soul as in a soul that we cling or attach to a soul that wow if I earn a lot of merit in this life and a lot of positive karma my soul is going to be reborn into a really wealthy family and I'm gonna have a super good life in my next life so it's really important to let go of this concept and know that if we want a good life and we want wealth in this life, we need to really look inwardly and, and realize that wealth doesn't come from money. It doesn't come from possessions. It comes from happiness and self-love and liberation from suffering. And that's true wealth, like really just learning how to be happy and learning how to love ourselves. So the concept of a soul isn't where will my soul go when I die? It's what can I do with my soul in this moment? How can I change in this life and how can I undergo rebirth right now in this moment? So if we have the desire to change, go after that desire, change right now in this, in this moment and let your soul be reborn right now in this moment. So that's the soul that I think about when I think about a soul in, in Buddhism you know, we're constantly being reborn, we're constantly changing, our cells and our body are constantly dying and constantly changing, and our bodies are forever changing. And it's really the impermanent nature of our bodies. It's really that, um, that anicca, you know, which is impermanence in, in Pali language. And yeah, like, it's super cool to have these realizations to know that I've been reborn again and again in this life. And it's amazing, man. Like I've been to the depths of hell and I've come out of that so many times. And uh, so I don't have to hold on or cling to or have upadana, which is clinging or attaching to the concept of where will my soul go when I die? But where will my soul go right now in this moment? So I'm changing every day and my soul is, is changing and I'm not clinging to where will it go when I die? I don't have to worry about where I, I will go when I die. I need to not even worry it at all. At all. Like my body is just the vessel to carry me through this life and carry me on to uh, the next life. If there is a next life, I don't know. I guess I won't know until I die. And I don't need to know. I just, I just need to be present right now in this moment and love myself in this moment. So... Look for my book. I think it will be coming out in uh, hopefully March. I'm going to self-publish. I've been I have a little GoFundMe and it's um, you know, Stephen Douglas Recovery and trying to get some financial support from everyone. I had a dear friend um you know, donate some money to me yesterday and it was a really a decent chunk of change and her intention was just to get me to Hawaii and um uh, supposed to go to Hawaii next month for 13 days and I don't think I'm going to go, man. I think I'm just going to give the check back and I think I'm going to just do the work I'm doing here and because that's where I need to be, like I need to be around my kids and going to meetings and you know, continue to volunteer at the rehab that I volunteer at and uh help those kids get through the holidays safely and and not leave rehab and go get high. So my work is here. My purpose is here. Hawaii is waiting. It will always be there. And uh, I have an opportunity to go three times a year with um, Ajahn. So how blessed am I, you know, like to be able to have these opportunities to travel around the country with um, my Buddhist teacher and um, partake in, in Buddhist retreats with him. And I'm so blessed in this life. I'm so grateful for everyone. And 
you know, I'm going to document my journey on the book, and that's my intention, and um, talk about my trials, my tribulations, how uh, I mess up with social media, and um, how other people's egos get in the way, and and they think just because I don't have a lot of clean time that I have nothing to offer, and I know I have something to offer. I'm offering something right now to people, and I'm super grateful for that. And, you know, my friend uh, who's kind of famous told me that I really need to grow a thick skin, and I don't know if I need to grow a thick skin. I just need to look at where other people are coming from and look at their intention and, and why they want to cause harm and what's going on in their own lives that they have to act out in such a way. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do that and look at my own ego and look at what my intentions are, if they're still pure, if they continue to be pure. Am I doing this just because I want some status or or what? And um, I've talked about I just want to be famous in my kids' eyes and raise my kids and love my kids and continue to be there for them and be their hero, you know, and uh, just be a, a shining positive example in their life and have them be proud of me. So Everybody have a really amazing day, and um, may all beings be happy. Kap jai, thank you. Suki hotu, may all, may you be happy. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And um, be cool if you could subscribe subscribe to my page, on my YouTube page. Um, I need a I need a hundred subscribers in order to have a URL to add it to my website. So subscribe to my page, yay! All right, everyone. I love you so much. Thanks again. Bye. Have a wonderful day.